A lot of call centers have low investment in training. And when I say that, I don't talk about just small call centers. A prime example of that was a very large company that turns over billions of pounds a year and their IT guys didn't know how to do a simple problem because their, their computers are locked down to stop any data being stolen or information being stolen. Um, so they gave administrative privileges to a work colleague um, and left it like that because they couldn't fix it. They said, well, just fix it yourself and just switched it on and let him do it and then just left it like it. Why? Because A, they didn't know what they were doing, but B, they didn't know how to do it remotely either. Um, I've had this where they blocked it down, for example, where you can't get printer drivers. Yet, obviously, if you've got a printer in the room, you need to be able to print and entire contracts have been affected by it. But the, the whole point here is Working with your call center or working with your outsourced people is important. If they've got stuff that is not working or they don't know how to do it, you need to be able to say to them, talk to me. I I can fix it. What is it? What's the problem? Because a lot of the time, there's a yes, um, what do you call it? A yes culture, especially in Asia. You get people say yes to everything. Can you jump off that cliff for us? Yes, yes, yes. You get people to do that sort of stuff. Not that they would jump off the cliff, but they would just agree to it. Because half the time they're not listening, but the other half is they do not want to um, say they can't do something. There's this thing of wanting to please in the same way you get these people desperate for the business. So they agree to stuff they cannot do. Um, this happens like a, a lot of this stuff um, with some of these call centers that take on these multinational contracts and haven't got the staff or ability to do it. But what they'll do is they'll keep fobbing off while they're learning on the paycheck. Because obviously while you're paying, they're actually getting people to learn how to do everything at your cost. But the easiest way to actually do it is actually to have a good engagement and partner with them. Learn what they can do and what they can't do and get them to learn the bits they can't, but also do not rely on the bits that they can't do. As I was saying, like the printer stuff, it was stupid um, because you end up with contracts unable to print off contracts for employing people, for example, um, because you have no facilities that actually work. So you can't actually print off contracts that are actually people's employment contracts. As such, you cannot get them signed, photocopied, sent back to get them on the payroll. So some of these things can have a very severe impact, yet nobody wants to talk about it. It's the elephant in the room scenario, but at the same time, I'm saying get yourself involved, even if it's not your um, venture. For example, say you've got somebody else outsourcing, Stick your nose in, because a lot of the time they will outsource it to somebody and if there's problems, they will try and bury it because they do not want to be seen as the idiot that hired the wrong company. As such, they will go, everything's running fine. But you'll go, okay, well, who do I speak to there? And get in touch with the people there and get stick your nose in, make sure everything's running fine. Ask them business-related questions to make sure things are running the way you want. If they're not, invest a bit of time with them, get them up to speed, share the knowledge, share the experience and get them where you want them to be.